Yeah, of course. Hi, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today, or all of us. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm Tessa with mamasgeeky.com, and I've got to say, I absolutely love the song that Maddie sings in this movie, and I want to know, was that always going to be part of the plan that you would sing? Um, it was absolutely not mentioned to me when I took the role. Uh, I am not known for my singing. Well, maybe I am known for my singing, but in a kind of humorous <laughs> isn't she awful not really let's hear her sing and ironically so um I definitely had I got very nervous when Tim Minchin and Harry Cripps and Claire Knight our directors and co-star mentioned that I would be singing this song but um and I had to record it by myself in my closet during lockdown um and it just playing my voice back would really crack me up because it sounded so tuneless but when I saw it in the movie I felt quite like proud of Maddie I thought she sounded it's it sort of worked Megan Cooper. Hi, I'm Megan from Jamunky, and I'm th very thankful that you guys are joining us today. Um, so Maddie and Pretty Boy learn something new about themselves during this journey back to the outback. Are there characteristics that you find that you relate with your character? Um, I think uh, having gone through adolescence uh, in the same way that sort of Maddie does on screen, where she has to come to terms with the fact that... Um, you know, it's the stage when you have braces or you're not quite comfortable in your skin yet. Uh, I definitely, I was a teenager too. So <laughs> I could identify with her journey into self-acceptance, definitely. Thank you. Amy. Hello, I'm Amy Fulcher from As the Bunny Hops. And when I was um, interviewing Harry a few weeks ago, he mentioned that the film was really a love letter to Australia. And then he told me the proper way to eat Tim Tams. So <laughs> I was wondering if you had anything that you really wanted people to take away from the film about Australia as well, or any specific snack advice that goes along with that. Oh my goodness. I mean, I'm hoping that he suggested that you nibble all the way around the outside of the Tim Tam, then dip it into the tea and then suck hard until you release the kind of creamy line middle. Is that what he suggested? That's exactly it. Okay, few. I mean, I would also suggest that um, a caramella koala should be eaten in a similar way where you sort of, um, you behead it, if you will, and then you suck the caramel hard and fast out the center of the chocolate. That's my other top tip. Meg. Hi, thank you so much for hopping on and doing this. I'm so excited to talk to you about this film. I actually watched it with my kids and we had such a recap afterwards. And I know you have kids, you know, from teenagers to little ones. Did you have a recap with them about these really heavy subjects that the movie talked about? Um, we didn't do a heavy recap, but we had just got back from spending a year in Australia. So I think there was just a lot of discussions about all the landscapes and the visuals and just like the colloquialisms and just the fun of the film from a kind of nostalgic, oh, do you remember when we were down under? Um, yeah, so it was sort of like it was very sweet and, and we all got very sentimental. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda from Guide for Moms and Crazy Amanda Reacts on YouTube. It's so great to talk to you today. And I kind of wanted to um, go back to what Amy was talking about Australia, because this year I've seen so many movies from Australia, like this one, Penguin Bloom, The Dry. So I was wondering, how does it feel, you know, to see more of these films which highlight the area? Um, well, I think those, are, those movies always get made and I tend to see them because I'm Australian and often I have friends or, you know, or just their stories that I grew up with or books that I loved when I was younger. So I tend to sort of stay plugged into the Australian film industry. But yeah, it's exciting to see so many great movies. I really enjoyed The Dry, um, you know, and, uh, and, and, I, and I'm just really proud to be able to sort of play a character with my own dialect that celebrates Australia in this way. And I'm, I'm excited for the rest of the world to, uh, to get excited about deadly creatures down under. Thank you. Amy. Areas.com. 
Um, I loved the movie, you know, normally I'm the type of person who would love the cuddly koala and, you know, be petrified of the snake like most people, but I fell in love with Maddie. Oh my goodness. She was so sweet. Um, I would love to know what drew you to her character. What made you want to be part of the film? Um, I sort of loved the story of someone who's kind of unaware of the fact they're being exploited in this zoo scenario and then sort of made to feel ashamed for something she can't control, her fangs and this venom that, you know, she was born with. And I just love the fact that in her search for sort of self-identity, she learns that kind of her family are the people that she's journeying with rather than, you know, who she was born with. And there's something about, um, you know, I think just that journey for her that I found really charming. And then I had a known Harry Kripsow, writer, director uh, with Claire Knight, I'd known for a few years. So we had almost worked together on a different project also um, about an Australian, an Australian story. So it was also, uh, it was a great opportunity to work with him during lockdown and uh, to do my own dialect and just the fun of acting alongside Tim Minchin, who um, I've always been a fan of and Eric Banner and, you know, there's such a wonderful Guy Pearce and Jackie Weaver and just these wonderful Australian actors that have collected for this, uh, for this story. Tessa. Hi again. Uh, you talked a little bit about um, recording the song in your closet, but did you get to meet any of the other cast or actually record with any of the other cast or was it all completely solo? It was all completely solo, um, but actually this, um, this specific movie, more than other animated movies I've done, there, there were more people on the Zoom. There were more voices involved, um, which, which felt good. Um, yeah, I think that, um, I, no, in fact, I saw Tim Minchin when we first arrived in Australia, in Sydney, and uh, that was our first kind of chat about the fun we'd had on the project. But truly, our directors were so collaborative that uh, after almost every take, we'd be able, I at least was um, was able to improvise as Maddie and, and just sort of play around with, you know, whatever was going on in the scene. There's a lot of action, as you know, a lot of adventure. And it was fun to kind of, um, you know, wriggle on the floor because it's sort of, you're in your closet, but you're pretending you're sort of trapped or you're cuddling something or you're hanging from something. And so no one can see you. Um, and so you just find yourself upside down in your own closet. <laughs> it's a bit silly. <laughs> Megan. So when we spoke to Harry, he was mentioning how he used to visit his grandparents and see a lot of these creatures on the regular basis, you know, taipans and things like that. Um, so I'm wondering, did you have any crazy pets growing up or were you ever around some of these dangerous creatures back in Australia? I mean, I, I, I was I was pretty heavily swooped by a magpie um, after school every day. Uh, it, it she definitely bullied me. I, I wasn't where I was walking underneath her nest, and I would have to sort of lie flat on uh, the scorching hot bitumen road um, to stop myself being uh, pecked um, until my dad would sort of come looking for me. And then I had a few kind of I was once washing my hair, and you know, a giant furry leg of a huntsman sort of dropped to the floor. Then I washed, and then there was another leg, and then I realized that I guess living in my ponytail was a huntsman spider, which I had shampooed right out of my hair. So I think um, all Aussie kids have these kinds of um, experiences. But truly, I, I wasn't aware until I traveled that it was such a big deal that we had sort of nine of the 10 most dangerous snakes and spiders in the world. And, you know, it's just kind of one of those things where your mom says, oh, you know, if you see a spider with a red back, you know, you stay away from it or that's a Sydney funnel web and you just get educated like you do with, you know, anything in your in your natural surroundings and you avoid, you know, you know that they they don't want to, you know, they're not there to attack, you know, they just, they're, they, you don't want to surprise them. Let's just say that. Thank you guys so much. That is our time. Thank you for a lovely conversation. Thank you so Bye, much. You Bye. Thank you. Aww.